Welcome back to the Health Longevity Secret Show, and I'm your host, Dr. Robert Lufkin. For this week's episode, we're going to look at a brief interview I recently did with James Stroll about my upcoming presentation at the RADFest conference in October in San Diego. While the interview is entitled Extending Life with Rapamycin, I want to be clear that one, the use of rapamycin is an off-label use of an FDA-approved prescription-only drug. And two, rapamycin is a potentially dangerous drug that should only be used under the care of a physician with experience in its use. And three, although extremely promising longevity results are present in animal models, the longevity benefits of rapamycin in humans are still being determined. As you can tell, I'm looking forward to all the great speakers at the RADFest conference this fall. If you're planning on attending, please use the code, quote, Lufkin, L-U-F-K-I-N, unquote, at checkout for 10% off on any registration. And now, please enjoy this conversation with James Stoll. Okay, Dr. Robert Lufkin, it's great to have you today uh, on this interview. Thank you for uh, appearing and and thank you for all the great work you're doing on Super Longevity. Oh, thanks, Jim. I'm so excited to be here today and I'm I'm really excited about uh, RADFest and joining everyone uh, this fall in October. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm very excited to meet you in person there. For those who don't know, uh, Dr. Lufkin is a clinical professor at USC Kirk School of Medicine. He served as the... uh, full professor at both the UCLA's David Gefton School of Medicine and the USC Keck School of Medicine with a current ag- academic focus on the applied science of longevity. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> He's also chief of the metabolic imaging at a large medical network in Southern California. So your hands are full, I can see that. <laughs> well, it, you know, it's such an ex- exciting time in the longevity space, it's like, I mean, I've been doing this a long time, but the last 10 years, it's been accelerating even more. And there's so many breakthroughs. I just, I wake up each morning excited about the day and, and I look, look forward to it. That's, it, wow. it's, it's such a, it's such a fun area to be working in now with everything that's happening as you know, as I'm sure you're finding out at RADFest, exactly. all the speakers there. You're doing some great work in Rapamycin, which you'll be speaking extensively on at RADFest. But can you give the folks a little bit of a sample of, you know, what what's being done in this field right now and uh, that, you know, will actually, uh, you know, educate them a little bit and, and show them that why they need to be at RADFest and learn more about this. It's, it's very exciting. Work. Yeah, sure. There, there are a lot of a lot of drugs and uh, protocols that have been suggested for longevity, but but one of them that stands out head and shoulders about, above all the others is a uh, a drug called rapamycin and it it's interesting because it's currently clearly the most effective and reproducible um, pharmacological approach that you could that we use for for directly increasing lifespan in in laboratory animals and and as we'll we'll see it's it's actually uh, able to be used in in humans it it works on a fascinating mechanism, which uh, basically mimics calorie caloric restriction, which is one of the oldest tried and true methods for increasing longevity, but it's not necessarily something that, that's practical for all of us to do, but it mimics that with our bodies. And then also it seems to increase something called autophagy, which is very helpful for longevity also. Yeah, yeah. Wow, beautiful. So are you actually, uh, you're involved, I understand, in a study now of rapamycin? Could you tell us a little bit about that? What we've done is we're, we're putting together a registry where we contact people who are taking rapamycin for longevity, and they, we ask them to report the findings and the experiences they're having with the rapamycin, as well as the dosages and their medical conditions. And these will be you know, anonymously reviewed. And then we're going to look at, at some of the effects that rapamycin has, as well as any of the, any of the side effects of rapamycin. But it's, it's a way to, to get information from, from human use of rapamycin that, that previously wasn't available. Actually, no one's done this yet uh, to look at 
a look at uh, rapamycin in humans for aging in this type of registry. So we're very excited about it. Yes, that is exciting. Thank you for you know doing this study because we're we're in such you know we are introduced to these different you know protocols, but too often, more often than not, we're not getting the data to really you know quantify the the, the real you know results or benefits. So thank you for doing this study to this extent. It's very it is very exciting. It's a challenge for us as humans, right? Because we can't sit back and and just not take every do everything we can to better our health. So we have to do like you said a proliferation of things that we feel are beneficial. And then sometimes, like you said, we don't know uh, unless like, well, this is why it's great you're doing this study because you're gonna get more people and Bob where we can get more data. Otherwise, uh, it's hard to really determine uh, what is really working, what's not when we're doing all these other you know, protocols, correct? Correct, yeah, absolutely. And this drug should only be given uh, with a prescription and under a physician's supervision. Uh, it's interesting that the, the drug's first approval was for immune suppression for renal transplant patients. And many doctors who are not familiar with using rapamycin for longevity, um, their only experience with rapamycin is as an immunosuppressant, which is not something you wanna do to a normal patient. So they, they have a misconception about the effects of rapamycin um, and they may not be familiar with the longevity uses of it, which is a completely different dosing schedule, which does not suppress your immune system. And actually at least one study in humans uh, has shown that it improves immune function. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you for my, so much for sharing this with us. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited, like I said, <laughs> to hear, I mean, I know you've got so much more to share with everybody at RadFest and we're going to be, I think, uh, really uh, uh, turned down by what you've got going here because uh, I myself, I mean, we're, all, everybody I think listening here really wants to uh, extend their life in a really healthy way. And if we can reverse it, we're just, that, that's even all the more exciting. Can you tell us though, before we end here, a little bit about metabolic imaging, what that, what that exactly is? Because I know that's, you're, you're actually, uh, Chief in your department of, for, of the metabolic imaging department. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is exactly for longevity? I mean, that's, that's an interesting uh, item in itself. Sure, yeah, all, all, the, all the chronic, my background is in radiology, first of all, sort of medical imaging and longevity imaging is using radiology tools to look at increasing our, our metabolic health, which translates into longevity and lifespan because all the chronic diseases that I mentioned before, all their single greatest risk factor is age. And those are the things that, that kill us. And by reducing the risk factor for those diseases, we prolong our life and that increases longevity. So longevity imaging, we look at things like liver fat for uh, fatty liver disease. We look at brain volumes for hippocampal volumes for Alzheimer's risk. Uh, we look at obesity, we look at diabetes risk, basically all the imaging profiles for all the chronic disease that um, are associated with aging. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. All right, well, maybe we'll talk a little bit about that at RadFest. Yeah, I can't wait Yeah, to, to be at RadFest and hear all the other wonderful speakers there as well. And, and just the, the opportunity to network with everybody and, and meet people face to face. It's gonna be great. So, okay, uh, anything else you wanna add before I, we close this interview? No, thanks. Thanks so much for the great work you're doing, Jim, with, with your program and with uh, conferences like RadFest. It's, it's, it's really helping people understand the possibilities for longevity and the choices in their lifestyle that can uh, improve their health and, and fight aging. I'm, I'm so excited about what you're doing. Thank, thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. So make sure you come and see Dr. Lufkin at RadFest. He's going to be, he's going to excite us with a lot of great information on rapamycin. And thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Jim. Bye-bye. No, this is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking of it because of something you have seen here. If you find this to be of value of you, please hit that like button and subscribe to support the work we do on this channel. Also, we take your suggestions and advice very seriously. Please let us know what you'd like to see on this channel. 
thanks for watching and we hope to see you next time